it's here. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, calm down, Ben. Calm down. So this is the MacBook Pro 14 inch base model with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. So this computer does have some plastic wrap around here. We're not doing all paper yet like I did on the iPhone. But yeah, the unboxing experience is pretty minimal. It seems like the box itself is even smaller than previous MacBook Pros. I could be wrong about that. Oh, all right, so in the box, here is the MacBook Pro. Ooh, feels kind of hefty. Definitely has some weight to it, but it's actually thinner than I thought it would be. Like the pictures and stuff just make it appear to be like this thick beast, which it definitely is. But in the hands, I mean, it's heavier than the MacBook Air M1 for sure, but it's not too much bigger feeling. It feels kind of like a 13 inch MacBook Pro, but it's actually 14 inches. What else is in the box? We have a really nice looking cable and it has this really nice braided texture. So as you can see, there's MagSafe 3 on one side of the cable and then the other side is a USB-C. And there are some stickers. Oh, check that out. We got some black Apple stickers here. Gonna add these to my little collection. And then there's some paperwork, some very, very lightweight paperwork. And then the only other thing in the box in this very minimal packaging is this power supply. So this is the base model 65 watt. I didn't get the extra charger and that kind of stuff. Cause like I said in my previous videos, I got this MacBook Pro, the base model of the 14 inch 2021 MacBook Pro, because I wanna see how far this thing can actually go for the kind of tasks that I need it to do. Primarily that would be video editing in Final Cut Pro, music production in Ableton Live, some photo editing in Adobe Lightroom. So that's what's inside the box and now let's actually unwrap this macbook pro Ooh. It does feel heavier than the macbook air for sure Ooh. got this nice oh damn this feels like a weapon or something oh damn this thing feels incredibly solid it feels so nice and like i said it does not feel super heavy in the hands. It actually feels relatively lightweight. I like the size of the MacBook Air. I like how small it is, how lightweight it is. That's why I got the MacBook Air M1 over the MacBook Pro M1. But now that this is out, it's a much beefier product than the MacBook Air. I'm really excited to see these ports on the side. These bumpers on the back of the MacBook Pro, these like rubber circles here, feel different. They actually feel like they're jetting out a lot. Like there's a little bit of thickness to them. I love the MacBook Pro branding on the back and it has a little bit of embossing even, which looks really nice. But yeah, it's a very minimal design and that's one of my you know, favorite things about Apple products in general. So it's a very refined design, you know, and it definitely feels like that kind of throwback to the old PowerBooks, the old MacBook Pros from several years ago, but it's thinner, you know, it's not as thick as I thought it would be. The exterior looks absolutely beautiful. Let's open this thing up. Ah, and before I even did anything, I didn't even touch any buttons. Oh, why is that so satisfying? Oh my gosh, this screen, y'all. What? <laughs> I checked the screens out for the 14 and 16 models in the store and it looked really amazing, but it was really bright in there and stuff. So now that I'm actually seeing it in my studio, I mean, this screen is absolutely breathtaking. It's really, really beautiful. And yes, we have the notch up there, which you know is not my favorite thing in the world. It's almost like the first thing that I saw when the screen turned on. Ah, oh, this keyboard feels super nice too. There's nothing like a fresh keyboard just right out of the oven. All right, just going through this setup process here. So I'm starting this computer as a fresh new computer. I'm not gonna like take settings from my previous computer. It's kind of a thing I like to do. I think it's kind of fun actually. So let's set up Touch ID. I'm just gonna rest my index finger on here. It seems pretty fast. It seems very responsive. And damn, that might be the fastest Touch ID I've ever done. <laughs> okay, we are officially in the MacBook Pro 
14 inch. This display is not messing around. I mean, it is just completely beautiful. Like the colors look very saturated, but not oversaturated. Here is the MacBook Pro 14 inch on the right, obviously, and the MacBook Air on the left. Both of these screens are at their top brightness, and it may be a little hard to tell from the angle of this video, but the screens both look absolutely beautiful. The MacBook Pro 14 inch definitely looks brighter, and the brightness, like the nits on this display on the 14 inch, it's double the amount of the 500 nits on the MacBook Air M1. But when you see this brighter and nicer screen with the much smaller bezels. Like you can see just how much smaller these bezels on the 14 inch are compared to the thicker, much thicker, shout out Noah Herman, bezels on this MacBook Air. And the MacBook Air is still a beautiful device. You know, it's thinner, it's lighter, it's incredibly fast, but this 14 inch MacBook Pro has the updated M1 Pro. But if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be doing more detailed comparisons between the MacBook Air M1 and the MacBook Pro. And just first impressions, yeah, it definitely feels faster than the MacBook Air M1, but does it feel $2,000 faster versus a MacBook Air M1 that you can get for under $1,000? Right now, honestly, no, but I haven't, you know, loaded Final Cut Pro on here. I haven't done any music editing, but just like the basic stuff, like, you know, web surfing, you know, just like, let's go to another website, New York Times. Yeah, that seems about as fast as it would be on my MacBook Air M1. You know, just scrolling around, I can see that the ProMotion is at work here. The ProMotion display has a refresh rate on this new MacBook Pro, both the 14 and 16 inch models that goes up to 120 Hertz in a variable refresh rate, kind of similar to the new iPhone 13 Pro and the Pro Max. And just doing some quick scrolling, it does seem zippier. It seems faster than my MacBook Air. Yeah, the refresh rate looks amazing. Colors look nice and vibrant, but not hypersaturated, not like unnatural or like supernatural. Like it looks very, very natural. And the details, like the pixels per inch look really nice too. It's incredibly sharp. It's really easy to see. If we go back into the New York Times and just try to read text, yeah, I can read really tiny text like super easily. The display I think is actually one of the biggest selling points. Like this is probably the best, not probably, this is the best display I've ever seen on a MacBook Pro. It's the highest resolution screen that a MacBook Pro has ever had as well. So of course it's gonna be the best. The keys also feel really nice. Let's do a quick typing test. So you can kind of hear what these keys sound like. So now that all that other stuff is out of the way, let's talk about the notch because it definitely is an eyesore when I first look at it. Like my eye just wants to go right to it. It's kind of weird that you can put the mouse behind the notch. That part alone is very strange and I kind of expected Apple to make this notch function where if you move the cursor near it, it would just kind of naturally go around it, underneath it and to the sides. Let me know in the comments what you think about the notch. But what's in that notch is this new upgraded camera and this is the new 1080p front facing camera on this MacBook Pro. And you know, under my kind of good studio lighting right now, it looks really good. It looks kind of, artificial maybe in terms of like the HDR kind of effect. And I'm definitely noticing a lot of noise in the shadows and even in this bright area. But overall, you know, like I think this looks pretty good. I'll have to do more tests to see if this looks better than the MacBook Air M1. All right, y'all. So my first impressions of this MacBook Pro is holy crap, this thing is absolutely beautiful. It's an amazing machine. It feels really different from my MacBook Air M1, actually a little more different than I thought it would be. Is this machine better than the MacBook Air M1? For sure, I love the display. The speakers sound nice and loud and crisp. Everything is absolutely bonkers fast. And of course, I'm going to have to do more intensive kind of video and photo editing, music editing, that kind of stuff. So I will be back with that kind of info in another video, but my first impression is I'm completely blown Blown away. I haven't heard the fan noise go off on this computer either, and I don't really expect to hear it go off at all 
we'll see. Oh my gosh, I am already in love with this freaking machine and I do think it's worth $2,000 if you have the money for the base model. Let me know your comments and questions down below and if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see me test, I'd love to see y'all down in the comments. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and maybe slightly entertaining. If it was, please smash the like button. I would highly appreciate that. It really helps me out. And also, of course, subscribe to the channel if you're not already because I'm going to be doing a lot more content with this MacBook Pro. Also, add me on Twitter at B3NAQUA. That's also my Instagram. I'll be posting a lot of kind of behind the scenes thoughts and pictures and other stuff onto my social media. So be sure to follow me on there. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.